just realized I hadn't started recording, so I'm going to start recording now. So, you know, if, our, if we have good upright posture, we're balanced left and right, we're balanced front and back, we're not stooping forward, our center of gravity is running directly through the midline when looked through the front and look through the side. And I'm gonna show some, uh, give you some images to look at in a second, which will make more sense. So, posture. And I've got permission, I've been very kindly given permission by these patients to use their images today. So, the good, the bad, and the painful. So, when we as chiropractors and health professionals, I'm sure anybody, um, you know, chiropractor, osteopath, physiotherapist, when we are assessing posture, we observe the alignment of the body and compare them to what we call a gravity line. So that center of gravity should be going right through the body, right through the center of the body. That's when you know everything is in balance. So I use a software program sometimes called Posture Screen, and you can see on the screen how, um, how it works. Effectively, I take a picture of the patient from different angles. This was a side view. And on the body, the technology asks me to place markers on individual anatomical landmarks, so parts of the body, classical bony parts of the body. In this case, um, well, not in this case, but in the ear, the shoulder, the hip, the knee, and the ankle. And the Technology then draws a vertical line, which represents the gravity line from the foot, because that's where you're in contact with the ground. And each of those points, those yellow little bullseyes, should be on the green line. So you can see in this example that every one of the points, of course, other than the foot, are off the green line, are off the green line, yes. And the, uh, the, the technology joins them up with a red line. And for every, um, for every dot which is away from the line, there is a there is accumulating tension in that area. So in this case, the calves would be tight, the hamstrings would be tight, the lower back would have more tension than necessary, the upper back would have more tension as well, and so would the neck. Here we can see another few examples. You can see that on the uh, left image, the points are not on the line. Actually, they are closer than the previous image, and you can at least see that the knee, the hip, and the shoulder, if I rub my cursor there, uh, are in good alignment, and then the head is jutting forward. So you'd say that this posture is actually not so bad, but when you look on the front image, what is also really relevant is the left and right sway. So you can see that the green line is, is going from the midpoint between the two feet, which is quite a narrow stance. This person's standing with their feet quite close together. But by the top here, you can see that the whole body is slightly weight-bearing more to the left. Now, most people are not aware of what they're doing with their posture. This, this uh, patient is probably feeling quite upright and vertical, but actually, uh, unbeknownst to the patient, has a slight left lean. On the image to the right, we can see that um, there's a, a slight backwards curvature to the knee. So some people have very flexible joints. In this case, the knee uh, is hyperextending slightly. And you can see as a result of that, because the, you can see that the knee is even behind the line here, that there's a compensatory big sway forward at the hip and then a backward sway towards the line in the shoulder. So you can, this is a different kind of posture. We call it a sway back posture. But the ideal is to work with patients to try to get their points more accurately on the center of gravity. Another um, kindly, I've had the permission for this patient to share this image, which is a before and after. Uh, you can see at the, the views at the top there that there is a, a, a difference uh, of about a, I'm trying to think now, an American, American uh, date format, about four weeks or so, I believe. That's uh, from, from January to February. And, um, oh, sorry, American format is in British format, silly. Um, that on the left-hand side, we could see that the, the main concern, the main uh, symptom problem here was um, the stiffness and tension in the upper back and neck, lots of desk work and writing, and the head was quite um, far forward. And, and uh, this patient's family had observed um, postural changes getting worse. So we discussed um, the concept of posture and the gravity line. And with some exercises and training over a, a, a few weeks, very short space of time actually, um, four to six weeks, uh, sorry, my maths, uh, uh, wasn't very good there. You can see how much closer all those points are to the line. So you can see I've left also the writing of the, the explanation here of what that does. Many of you probably have already been reading this, but what happens and why this is so important is that when we do deviate away from the line, 
there is more effort uh, that has to be made by the muscles to hold the body parts up against the forces of gravity. So knowing the body weight of this patient, uh, the head weighs approximately 6.1 kilograms as a percentage proportion of the whole body weight. But due to the uh, change in posture, the head weight increases effectively. So the head, of the, the head weight was effectively 32 kilograms based on how much further away from the line it was uh, in the beginning. But it has reduced in weight significantly uh, following improving the posture. You can see it's gone down from 32 kilograms on the 13th of January. This is how much effectively, due to the laws of physics, the head weighed in the patient at this point and um, first attending. But after working on the posture, uh, on this date, the, the head had reduced in weight by 59%. So you can imagine the effect that reducing the effective um, head weight down 60%, what positive effect that has on the joints on, and uh, muscles of the head and neck. So this is a really great result. And thank you for permission for sharing that. Sitting is even worse. Okay, so we're getting closer to the working from home uh, problem. So most of us, when we sit in a chair, we'll sit in any number of ways, but this person on the left is sitting with a bum a far away from the backrest. This places a lot of stress on the lower back here and the head has to flex as a result. I'm gonna actually just demonstrate that in a chair so you can see me do it in a chair here. So I've got a chair. If I have a backrest, if I let my bum slump forward like this, there is no support in the lower back. Ligaments over 20 to 30 minutes creep and deform. So they actually start to stretch and that's not necessarily a very good thing. So if we're sitting in this position, our lower back starts to sink and sag into that space, which leads to back problems. If we sit with our bums at the back, but we're leaning forward towards our computers, which is a very, very common desk posture, or we're sitting with, with, a, with our bum in the middle of the seat, then we're effectively hanging on our ligaments. All the body weight is being held on the ligaments and onto the muscles and over time, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And the head also has to start to extend as a result. So the ideal position is bum and shoulder blades against the backrest of the chair. That way you know you're supported on any chair. It doesn't matter if you're on a plane, a train, in a car, on a sofa, at a desk. We're going to talk about that in a second in a bit more detail. Going back to my PowerPoint. Now in 1979, 1980, around that time, a doctor, Vladimir Yanda, identified that there were identifiable posture sets that people tend to fall into. And he identified this postural set, which is very relevant to desk workers, uh, people working from home, which is called the upper crossed postural set. And he found that you could draw a line that connects the tightest muscles and the weakest muscles. So the muscles that tend to become tight, and as I point them out, are gonna be very familiar to you, are the upper trapezius muscles here at the back of the neck and around the shoulder blades. Tightness also in the back of the neck here, just underneath the skull, which can lead to headaches. And tightness in the pectoral muscles, which are here in the front of the chest. And people develop weakness in the deep neck muscles underneath the chin and between the shoulder blades. Now, what that allow, what, if I d demonstrate, if this was the ideal posture, if we're leaning towards our computers and looking down on our devices, we're tending to go towards this, um, this posture set. You can see my head is jutting forward and my upper back is extra rounded. And this is the posture most of us find us in. And the body learns and adapts. So it thinks, okay, well, if you put yourself in that position most of the time, then I guess we're going to switch off certain muscles and switch up other muscles. So you end up with this imbalance between weak, weak muscles and tight bunched up muscles. So this is exacerbated when you're working at home. And I'll tell you why now. So this can lead, as I said, to tightness in these upper back muscles of the shoulders, tightness in the pecs, and therefore a pinching that you can get in the front of the shoulders. Lots of people will complain of that, and that can often be related to posture. Headaches, I've put suboccipital, but headaches that can actually go from the base of the, uh, base of the skull round over the ears to the forehead. It's called a cervicogenic headache. Mid-back pain between the shoulder blades in that 
that mid back area there and breathing and rib problems as well because if you're rounding your shoulders and squeezing everything at the front then you're compressing your ribs into your sternum and you're going to be also slumping and making it much more difficult for the rib cage to expand and to uh, and to uh, contract when you're breathing so it can lead to that problem as well and as I mentioned, our bodies learn and adapt. So whatever habitual postures you find yourself in eventually cause our muscles to change, not permanently, but it is a change that will become habitual. You'll automatically go to that default position. So shortening, as I've mentioned, in certain muscles and tightening, and then weakness in other muscles. And then that leads to knots. That's what this diagram represents, areas where we can develop trigger points classically, tight spasmic areas within the muscles and those become inflamed and cause pain, leading to headaches, jaw pain, neck pain, shoulder pain and back pain. So often it is literally just your posture which is causing the, the problem. So we're gonna do an exercise together now, so I'll stop sharing. So I want everybody at home in their chairs to, this is a very rare occasion the chiropractor gives you permission to slump. So I want you to sit forward in your chair and slump. Okay, so I can see there's some of you moving, which is great. So just let your body completely sink into itself posturally. Let your arms hang by your sides. And I want you to keep your, your trunk in this position whilst you attempt to raise your arms as high as you possibly can. Now, it'll be different for everyone, but personally, when I am slumping and trying to raise my arms in the air, I can't get them much higher than that. So you might get to about shoulder height, but if you're fully slumping, what's happening is that your shoulder blades, the position of your shoulder blades are moving to compensate for the position of the thoracic or mid-back spine. So that means that your shoulders can't fully lift themselves up. So it's best done in a sitting position, this one, okay? So now we're gonna sit up nice and tall. So really sit as upright as you can, nice, length and spine, really sitting nice and, and, and tall in your chair, arms by your sides, and raise them up as high as you possibly can, staying nice and tall and upright. And you should find that your arms can now go much, much, much higher. They double in range of motion. So that's just an instant illust illustration so that you can see how immediately uh, a change in our posture can negatively impact the function of a joint. There's nothing wrong with the shoulder, but because you put it in a funny, because you put the spine in a slumped position, the shoulder can't raise. So the, the relevance of that is that if you are always habitually sitting in that position all the time, every day, eventually, because of the changes that will occur in the soft tissues of the shoulder, you're going to end up causing impingement syndrome. So some of you might have had pinching pain in the, in the shoulders when you're trying to reach for something in the past. So that could literally be simply due to your posture. So that's how important it is to have good upright posture. Uh, and we demonstrated how immediately before and after just changing your posture changed the function of your shoulder. You physically couldn't get higher than here and then suddenly we get a whole other 90 degrees which is, uh, which is why it's so important. Okay, so I shall stop waffling. I will go back to my uh, PowerPoint. So we did this and we did the next one as well. So here we are. When not to sit. You're not going to like me because I'm going to say don't sit in soft, comfortable places. So I took a few pictures just to demonstrate. Here you can see me sitting on a sofa at a coffee table. Really, really, really common um, work from home place to work. Leaning on my own knees. You can see a big forwards arch. You can imagine my center of gravity is not back here where it should be over my hips so that my spine is going nice and tall up towards the sky, which is how you should think of your, your spine, tall and going and pointing straight up towards the sky and down to the earth. I'm leaning forward on a 45 degree angle. So it is the muscles of my back and my neck which are gonna be holding me up. I'm leaning on my, my knees, that's gonna cause pins and needles in my arms eventually. And my head is effectively um, ducking into my shoulders a bit like a vulture or a turtle. On the right side here, lying in bed, you know, people do, believe it or not, work in their beds. Um, you know, yes, the bed, you spend eight hours there a night if you're lucky. Um, 
but it's not made for working in. So although my spine is fully supported, my head and neck and upper back, if you were to be able to see the skeleton at the top of the spine here, it's actually going from horizontal to vertical and more. So there's a, a, a big turn of the spine that's happening at the top here. The, sp the neck you know, is supposed to be when you're in an, um, the normal neck shape is to bend backwards slightly. So if you're gonna stay for a long period of time working in your bed, with a neck which is flexed, you're gonna end up with upper back tension and, and problems as well. And here at the bottom, looking again, very chilled and loungy on the sofa, feet up, whoop, let me just go back, feet up crossed. Again, no crossing of legs, ideally. Uh, and that, the fact that my feet are higher than my hips mean that there's extra leverage going through my lower back in a bad way. So we're pushing the back into a flexed position. Again, the back should have an extended position and then the neck is flexing forward. So if I just show you on a spine here, this is the normal shape of the spine. It has a double S shape. So we should have a little backwards curve of the neck. By the way, the face is here. So this person's looking that way, base of the skull. You've got a little bit of a, a backwards curve here, which is normal. Then we have a convex mid back. We all recognize that from this kind of posture. And then the bottom, actually is the opposite. It should go the other direction. We always want to maintain these curves. These are the natural neutral curves of the spine. So when I'm lying on my back in that last picture you just saw slumping, what's happening is my lower back is bending the other way and my neck is also bending the other way. So that's what's happening in the spine. Short, you know, of course we can bend that way. We're designed to move that way, but it's not supposed to be for hours on end. Uh, same with the sofa. You know, this is the normal shape of the spine. And if I'm, if I'm leaning, sorry, I'll turn them around to, to be more like the image I had earlier. If I'm leaning forward towards my, my coffee table, yeah, I'm turning my spine into this big arch shape and the center of gravity, you can imagine gravity is pulling this head down and the head weighs size, you know, pound for pound or uh, size wise, uh, exactly the same because of the density as a melon. So you can just imagine having a heavy melon at the end of this spine, what that's gonna do. So it's all your ligaments and your muscles which are holding you up. So always trying, the key is to have these natural, normal, neutral spine curves in every position, wherever you are. And I'll show you how in a second. Going back to my PowerPoint. Yeah, anything that may feel good now will probably not feel uh, good later. So how should we sit? So ideally, bum and shoulder blades right back against the back of the chair and head perched nicely on top. If you have your bum and your shoulder blades in the right place, because of the way we're designed, the head will more naturally fall into the right place anyway. Feet flat on the floor, knees separated, no crossing of the legs under the desk or wherever you are. Sitting back rather than leaning forward. So find yourself comfortable at your, com at your computer and bring everything closer to you. Don't lean into the computer. Neck nice and long. So I always say, imagine that you're holding, imagine someone is suspending you by a thread at the crown of the, uh, the head. So you've got thread there and you're being pulled up nice and taut. Imagine the spine is a bit like a chain of links and you're pulling both ends just slightly and that's keeping everything in a nice uh, straight line. And then slight tucking in of the chin. So I'm gonna give you uh, some videos, by the way, to watch at the end of this in your own time on YouTube. So for example, here is uh, one way that it was, you could be sitting. You know, if you don't have an office desk and you don't have the proper office chair, that's okay. That some things are better than others. So try to find a proper dining table chair and a surface like a, this dining table that you can sit on. Feet flat on the ground, as you can see, bum and shoulder blades against the, the, the backrest. This is the ideal, yeah? Okay, so the monitor's not level with the eyes here. Uh, but this is better than sitting on the sofa or using a coffee table. So if you, if you, and if you, if you can, ideally, you would not use a laptop, you would use, or if you have only got a laptop, you can buy a cheap external keyboard that you can plug in and you can elevate the laptop onto some folders, which I'll show you in a sec here. Exactly. So here, uh, another uh, recommendation, better still than sitting down, is to stand by a kitchen uh, unit and put the computer, if necessary, depending on your height, obviously, on a couple of folders or some thick books. I would have said yellow pages in the past, but they're now way for thin. Um, so some nice big thick folders 
uh, with a laptop on, st on, on top, or you can borrow my patented invention, which is uh, a homemade standing desk, which is a, an ironing board, oops, an ironing board there. And on top of that, because of my height, I would put some additional folders. You'll know how high you need it to be because when you're standing, your shoulders should slope downwards like this. They shouldn't be elevated. So this would be too high if I'm in this position to reach the keyboard. So dropping your shoulders down and wherever your elbow lands at that height or lower should be your keyboard. I think I've got maybe some questions coming in. Just check. I might ask, answer these at the end. Yes. It is okay to have, uh, Sarah's asked, is it okay, because it's relevant to this bit, I'm going to answer now. Uh, it is okay to have a big cushion behind the back while sitting in a chair. It's a great idea. So that's going to help keep that lower back lordosis or that concave curve in the lower back. So if you are sitting on, on any chair, um, but that's one of my tips I was going to give afterwards for sitting on the sofa. If you are going to sit on the sofa, even just to watch TV for a long period of time, putting some thick pillows in the lower back helps to maintain the correct shape of the spine. So I'm going to go back to my um, going back to my uh, presentation. So another uh, key is just don't sit for so long. Move. Uh, some of you may not know about the some of you may know about the Pomodoro technique for avoiding uh, for productivity actually, but uh, you can apply it to movement as well. So the 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 uh, premise is that you work in 25 minute blocks followed by a short break. And because of the way we work uh, mentally, it is uh, a, a better way to stay focused on what you're doing. And um, so I would recommend adding an extra dimension to that, which is setting a timer on your, on your phone, or you can use, and it was named after this timer, this uh, tomato shaped kitchen timer, um, which is why it was called the Pomodoro technique, Italian for tomato. So work in 25 minutes tomato breaks and move at the end of that break. Put a little check mark on a piece of paper on a post-it note next to your computer, get up, just go and get a drink, whatever you need to do, go to the bathroom, come back to your computer, press the timer again, and then continue working. It only has to be a few minutes. And then every four checks on your check mark uh, post-it note, you would then have a longer break. So it might be your lunch break, um, or you just, just have a, a longer break and move around, stay standing, walk around the house or whatever you need to do. But don't sit for hours on, on end um, on a computer, on a sofa or on a coffee table. That's, that's what causes problems. So I've talked a lot, let's stretch together and I'm going to stop sharing the computer. I'm gonna share this um, video uh, with you a bunch, uh, along with a bunch of others which are really, really uh, hopefully gonna help you. So you don't have to worry about remembering everything. So I want everyone to do this, uh, this exercise with me, this group of, uh, of stretches. So let's start with looking as far as we can over our right shoulder really just push into the end range there. You might feel some muscle shaking, you might even feel some tenderness, discomfort. Turn all the way to the other side as far as you can. Again, just pushing into that end range. Challenge your muscles and joints. Try to keep the torso nice and still. And then you can slowly come out of it and go back to the other side. And then slowly back to the other side again. So we're just going to do two, but you can do up to five in each direction. And I said, I call this the big no, big slow motion no. Come back to the center and then you're going to go back. There's going to be a big slow motion. Yes, right back. Keep your teeth together. So you stretch all of these muscles underneath the jaw that connect from the jaw to the throat, down to the collarbones and then opposite. So come down and chin down to chest. And what's great about doing this, if you do this every morning when you wake up, or maybe after moving around for half an hour, because you'll probably be very, very stiff anyway, is that you become aware of where your tensions are. Head right back as far as you can, teeth together, and head forward. And if you do it nice and slow, you're tuning into your body, and you're just becoming aware of where your tensions are and, and, and where you're holding stiffness. Ear to the shoulder, so I call this the maybe. Not technically the sign for maybe, but it is for our purposes. Ear to the other shoulder. So lovely to see you all doing this on your screens. 
lovely and then we go back to the other side and like i said i'm just going to do two in each direction but you could be doing up to five in each direction and i'm sure you'll all agree it feels quite nice by the way when you're stretching your arms don't necessarily do nothing if i'm going this to the uh, left direction for me i think my screen is mirrored so it looks like i'm going to the right i would reach down with the opposite arm to get an extra stretch you probably feel that and um, you do that on the other side. So let's now do a more focused stretch of the trapezius muscles. And like I said, I'm going to be sending you this as a video on YouTube. So you're going to reach over your head and hold just above the ear. This arm is going to point to, is actually going to reach for the ground. That anchors the shoulder down. Then you're going to pull the ear to the shoulder. and reach down towards the ground and you're going to just feel that upper trapezius stretch. This is called a static stretch. It's because it's not continuously moving. Now, these are usually to be done as we're doing just to remove tension throughout the day and after exercise. And they should always be held for minimum 25 seconds. Lots of people will just do a 10 second stretch, but muscles resist being stretched. So you have to wait until the muscle goes, okay, I'm gonna let go. <laughs> so just make sure that you are holding for long enough. Swapping sides, obviously, you've got two of them. So reaching for the ground with this arm, pulling ear towards shoulder on the other side, nice and slow, always going slowly into stretches. And then also another tip with stretching statically like this is to breathe in, breathe out, and pull a little bit harder when you breathe out. Muscles also relax more when we breathe out. Very good. So now that we've done each side individually, we're going to do both sides together and that's going to stretch the center of this muscle group and the back of the neck. So interlace your fingers. They're going to go over the crown of the head. And then keeping again the torso nice and upright, we're just going to pull the chin down towards the chest. And I've got you all on gallery view, so it looks lovely to see a screen full of people stretching. Makes me very happy. <laughs> I am strange. Chin to chest, good. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. And then let go, always coming out slowly because your muscles are now uh, relaxed. Shoulder rolls, we're going to draw big circles now. I'm going to imagine that you've got a pen attached to the side of your arm and you're trying to draw a giant circle on a piece of paper on both sides. It's a nice big stretch. I really like these. Do nice big circles. Now I'm giving you a very simple stretching routine. I could give you dozens of stretches. There are so many stretches out there, but these basic stretches are enough and they're short enough to be done more frequently. You can of course do longer stretching routines, but it, then you're bordering into doing a mini yoga session, which is fine once a day, but for practicality, if you're wanting to keep working, then doing these stretches every now and again um, is enough. So you don't need to do much more than that. Well done, everyone. Thank you for joining in there and getting interactive. Going back to my PowerPoint. So there's the list, but I'm going to actually send you a YouTube video, which is me demonstrating just like I did. And you can do it with me. I know I've got a few patients who, who watch the video once or twice a day, um, and it really helps them. Now, I want to show you one other exercise, which is uh, gold. This, this exercise is brilliant, and everyone who learns it says it's, uh, it's the best thing uh, ever. It's called a micro break. It was actually named after a guy called uh, Dr. Brugger. So it has another name, the Brugger break, uh, which I'm, I'm saying that because that's what I've called it on my YouTube video. So you, I, you recognize it, but it takes 30 seconds to do. And in an ideal world, you would do it every 30 minutes. So again, I'm gonna walk you through this one, but once you've got it, it's dead simple. Okay, so really wanna concentrate on this one because this is, this, is this is the one. Uh, if nothing else, take this with you from uh, today's session. So, and again, I have a video for this. So you've been on your computer, you've been working for hours on end, 
and all that tension has accumulated in your muscles and you've been in this T-Rex posture. You've been in dinosaur pose for the last uh, few hours and you go, I'm going to remember that stretch I, I was told about by, by uh, Owain. So push the computer away. Come back away from the computer a little bit, if necessary. I hope you can see me okay. We're going to sit now on the very edge of the seat. So we're going to actually perch on the edge, edge of the seat. Now, you can, if you're in a chair, great, office chair, great, bed, you can do this on the edge of the bed, you can do this on the sofa. So wherever you are, you can be doing this. You can even do this standing up. But we're going we're gonna to assume most of you are sitting to do your work. But if you're at your uh, kitchen unit or on your ironing boards working, then you can do it standing too. So feet flat. Turn your feet out ever so slightly, okay? You don't have to do Charlie Chaplin, it only has to be a little bit, yeah, a few degrees. Knees separated, hip width apart, so everything's kind of opening slightly. Posture, nice and tall spine, so really sit as upright as you can, really proud chest. Look slightly above the horizon. And now we're going to turn our arms inside out. Now, bear with me. You've been in this position, so we're first going to turn the palms up. We're going to open and spread the fingers, so the opposite of typing fingers, so open and spread, palms up. Elbow is going to be slightly tucked into our sides. Open the arms, so you're externally, externally rotating, and I'm going to face you to, to show you that. I look like this, yeah? And then what are you going to do? If take a breath in, breathe out, and try to turn the palms to face behind you. It is not anatomically possible, obviously, but that will activate your mid to lower trapezius. Keep your shoulders down and squeeze an imaginary pencil between your shoulder blades. Take a breath in, breathe out, and squeeze the shoulder blades down and back and turn the palms behind you in your mind. Breathe in, out, last one. So it's three deep breaths, which amount to about 30 seconds. And then you stop. And you've probably been feeling some tension, aches, pains, tightnesses, weaknesses, all kinds of weird sensations, because what you've done there in that 30 seconds is you've forced your, your brain effectively to turn up the volume on all of those inhibited muscles that have been switched off because you've been in this habitual posture. So the first few times you do this, it's gonna feel tight, achy, uncomfortable, and, and unusual. But if you get into the habit of doing this every, ideally in the beginning, you would do this every 30 minutes. But if it's every hour or two to start with, you know, don't beat yourself up. We're not about saying it has to be a hundred times or nothing. You know, once is better than never at all. But if you wanna go for it, some people are much more uh, keen than others, then you could be doing it every 30 minutes. And that will just reset all of the muscles, rebalance everything so that you're not constantly tightening up and scrunching up the posture at the front. You're firing up all of those external muscles and, and extensors, and that will uh, reboot your posture. I say it's a bit like a control, alt, and delete in your posture. So if you're working from home and you don't, you know, I've, I've made some recommendations, sit like this, use a computer like this or desk like that. You know, if you don't have the ability to do that, I know we're all in different situations, then at least do this exercise because that will undo or go a long way to preventing the tension accumulating um, in all of those tight muscles that, that we tend to get. So, um, lastly, I wanted to, uh, I think, I believe that's actually the last of my slides, but I'm going to answer some questions that have come in. And you're welcome to type your questions now as well if you have any in particular. I'll just double check. Oh yeah, uh, just to say that we're doing online consultations. We are closed, we can't, you can't come to the clinic, but we are doing online consultations. This is one, again, I've had permission uh, by my patient here to, to use this video. It's just to demonstrate what it looks like and feels like. Um, but we can still assess you and see you on camera and get you to move around for us and tell you what's going on and what you should and shouldn't do and send you exercises. So we're still doing online consultations. Um, and also, these are the videos I'm sending you. So I'm going to post those now in the chat group, and I want you to open them on your browsers um, so that you can 
access them. Can you all see those? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can in the chat? Yeah. Okay. I've seen this, the shaky head there as well. You can't see them in the chat. Oh, I know why. It's because I've sent them privately to one person. One lucky person's got the stretches, but no one else. Okay. See what I said earlier about making sure you send it to uh, everyone. Oh, lovely. Lots of thumbs up. So nice to see that. Great. So those are the, there are three videos, how to set up your desk, neck stretches. So the one we did looking left, right, back, forwards, side to side. And that one and the shoulder rolls that's in there. And also there is uh, the micro break one we just did. Yeah. And remember, you can do it standing. So you just go from being in a sitting position to a standing position, nice and tall. And I'm also going to share, and I'm going to answer your questions now. Um, if anybody wants to, I do post um, uh, videos, or do uh, online live stuff on our social media. So there's various social media channels you can follow and see other things like this. I'm not just doing webinars like this. I'm also doing uh, Facebook Lives, answering questions there and doing various stretching videos and workout videos. So, um, and our website, web address there and our blog. Let's answer some questions. So, some have just come into the, uh, um, into the uh, chat box. Some people put a box under the table to elevate the legs. Is that a good practice? Great. I can't see why not, you know, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> be careful how you set it up, but it's all nice and safe. But if you've got, you know, the same size blocks and that elevates the, the box. Yeah, uh, but elevates the desk. Why not? That's fantastic. Um, I think the, I like the ironing board. Someone recommended that to me because an ironing board is adjustable. So if you're shorter or taller, you know, you can get it um, higher. I put folders on top of the ironing board. So yeah, I can't see why you can't do that. Any hands or ankle exercises whilst working at any at the desk? Okay, um, good question. I mean, I'm gonna answer this just quickly. One thing I will do is um, get people to clasp their hands like this. And you can just do what we call figure of eight movements so that you're just kind of going in circles. I, I'm sure many of you are hearing clicks and clunks and all kinds of noises. It's normal, don't worry. Our bodies click sometimes and that's okay. And the other direction, good. You can do a prayer position and slowly going further down so that your wrists are lower than your elbows. And this would be a stretch in a way, so you'd hold that for your 25 seconds. You can do reverse prayer as well. So the backs of the hands are together. And some of you might be thinking, oh my God, I'm not that flexible. That's fine. Everyone has their own range of motion. Yeah, pushing the backs of the hands together. You can do what's more of a tennis elbow stretch. So you'd actually hand out and down in front of you. And the other hand goes over the back of the hand, not the fingers, but the hand. And you're pulling down, locking the elbow out, swap sides. I'm just doing them quickly for your benefit. So those would be some good hands and forearm wrists if you are um, exercises, if you are getting tension in the forearms. And our wrists and our ankles are actually anatomically pretty similar in design. So again, you might want to do circles with your ankles and the other way and stretching your calves. So most of us know our classic calf stretches where you're kind of doing this like a runner. Yeah. Heel staying on the ground, locking the knee out. So I would just do calf stretching mainly for the ankles, um, but there are many others. I'm, and I know this is, I'm, I'm kind of allowing a free for all here with the questions, um, but some of the, your questions might actually lend themselves better to future webinars or some of the videos you might find on YouTube. Um, so do check those out as well. Some of the questions I had in advance, I wanted to answer. Um, if you're tall and you cook more now as a result of being at home, how can you stop your lower back aching? from the stooping, I guess, from the, from the chopping. And actually tall, I've got, I've got, you'd be surprised, quite a few tall chefs that come to see me um, because of this very problem. So one thing you can do, and it's the same for cooking, uh, sorry, for cooking, for doing the dishes, is put your foot up on a ledge. So if you put your foot up on the kind of, uh, if you open a cupboard, if there is one underneath, and you have a, the ability to put your foot up on a ledge, that helps to maintain a lower back um, arch. And of course, just like I showed you with the uh, computers, you can put them, you can put the chopping board onto something to elevate the chopping board. It's all about bringing everything up to your level. Another thing with the neck, as I showed you with the upper cross diagram, we tend to get inhibition or weakness in these muscles here. So the head kind of just hangs forward. If you tuck your chin in slightly as if you're trying to hold a little ball underneath your chin, imagine that you are, 
you'll activate these muscles. So just tucking the chin in so that when you're chopping, you're not just letting the head hang and then the lower body stooping within. So the main things are put a foot up on something like a little step. So you, can, you can actually get little steps for the kitchen to get to the cupboard. So you can actually put one of your feet up on there that helps the lower back. Um, is there a way to sit on a sofa that is way too big or round uh, and way too slouchy? So we kind of answered that question earlier. Someone uh, asked me a similar thing. Big pillows in the lower back. We've got a sofa which kind of stops there. So the head's free to go where, where it wants to. So I get a pillow and I put it against the wall to fill that gap so that my head is completely supported. Or you can get two pillows, depends on how big your pillows are, for the lower back so that you're, that, that you're being... Uh, uh, supported in that lower back again remembering the shape of the spine the normal shape of the spine this is the front over here the back here so you want to fill this gap always support that that space in the lower back i'm going to scroll down to these questions see them coming in um thank you for the thanks uh resistance band training as i can see in the mirror so much called my left front shoulder is always very seized up after Okay, that sounds like a specific symptom problem that we should talk about um, personally. So uh, I'll have a chat with you uh, with that. Uh, I'll have a chat with you about that afterwards. Uh, and I've got, oh, I'm back over here, which I work many hours. It's quite bent, not straight. I'm facing the cushion to help. Yes, I do. Back straight when sitting, even though the cushion is quite soft. Sorry, I'm not kind of reading that out clearly. Uh, the back of the chair um, that Rudolph is working on is not is quite bent and not straight. Yes, change, you know, if you have an office chair or if you're buying one or going to buy one, you should try to get one which is as adjustable as possible and has lumbar support so that the lower back of the backrest comes out to fill the space of the lower back. But if you haven't got that and you just have a straight chair or a, a, an unusually designed chair that's not meant to be worked on, then I would definitely put a cushion in the lower back. Yes, absolutely. Good idea. Just scrolling up to see if there are any other um, questions. Um, so again, uh, um, Karin, thank you for your message uh, about the sciatica. Again, I'm very happy to speak to you privately about that. I also have some videos on uh, exercising with sciatica and nerve flossing. So um, anyone who's had sciatica or get, who gets pain in the leg, there's an exercise that you can do called nerve flossing that's quite good for you. Uh, depends, of course, what's causing the sciatica. So with a specific symptom like that, sciatica means pain in the leg, by the way, um, specifically uh, relating to the sciatic nerve that's being trapped, usually either by a disc or a tight muscle, or it could be from arthritic change. So generally speaking, it's you know, you should always get the sciatica diagnosed by a professional first so that you know what kind of sciatica you have and what's most likely going to be uh, pinching the nerve or irritating the sciatic nerve. One of the prescribed exercises I would give to someone, um, provided it was okay to give it to them, would be sciatic nerve flossing. I'll demonstrate it to you in case anyone else also has sciatic symptoms or gets them sometimes. Again, I have a YouTube video on this. So you'd sit in the chair, or actually I'm going to sit on my desk because you can see me a bit better there. So you'd, you'd want the leg ideally swinging, as you can see here. And then what we do is we point the foot towards me. Can you see how I'm pointing the foot towards the sky? I'd sit nice and tall. And then I'm going to straighten the leg as I look up behind me. And now I'm going to slowly move both the leg and the head forward. And then I'm going to repeat about this speed and people will find usually that there's an increase in the sciatic symptoms as you're starting to pull the nerve and that's normal you should never push into any sharp pain but it is normally quite uncomfortable and you would just repeat that about 10 times on the sciatic side but no harm in doing the either the other side there are many variations of this exercise you can do it lying down you can move um, the head and the leg in, in, this, in the opposite direction. I've got a video, like I said, on YouTube, but that's something that's probably best if we chat to private, uh, chat with each other privately about. A few people are asking me for that video now, so I will share it. But I wanted to actually, I can show you um, my desktop and you can see if you go to the Backspace YouTube channel, you'll see that there are quite a few videos here. And at the bottom here, here's a sciatic nerve flossing. 
In fact, it's had quite a few views. It's one of the most popular uh, videos because so many people have sciatica. This one next to it, Mackenzie stretching is also good for lower back problems that usually lead to sciatica. You can see here also the Brugger break. I've sent that one to you separately. So you can go, I've also put the link in the chat for the YouTube channel. Um, so you should see if we scroll back up uh, that there's the YouTube channel. I'm going to post it again uh, to everyone, obviously. There, okay. In the chat, you can see you can go to YouTube there and look at all of those videos and look for the ones related to sciatica. Um, just checking any other exercises. Uh, sorry, any other questions? Uh, I've got a private message. I'll answer that privately. Um, about the muscles on the left side contracting and I need to know left side of which body part so I can I can show you um, and oh uh, someone's asked for advice about pregnancy Anna if you go to our Facebook the best thing I can tell you to do to save your time as much as mine as well because it would take too long I've just done a whole video on Facebook on um, pregnancy so hip pain lower back pain pelvic pain in pregnancy and stretches i recommend you do and some general advice and the why we get problems when we're pregnant well not me but um uh, why women get problems when they're pregnant so head over to the facebook group for that that was a live i did recently and it's posted as a wall uh, as a video on the wall so um i see people have to hop off now so yeah hop off whenever you need to and you're all very welcome. This was the first one. I hope it's been useful to you and I'm going to do them more often, as often as I can. So any suggestions, any requests, send them in to me. And I hope you have a lovely Saturday and the weather gets better for all of us. Look after yourselves. Take care, everyone. <laughs>